How's it guys? Coyote Works here. Well man, it has been a while since I've been out. I think the last trip I went on was a little over five weeks ago. It is a much needed opportunity for me to get out for the weekend. So on this trip, I'm gonna try to find a segment of an old wagon road. And the reason why I'm gonna do that now is because sometimes when there's a little bit of snow on the ground like this, it actually makes some of those older tracks like that easier to pick out with the eye. So I'm gonna to try to find that old wagon road, maybe an old homestead site or two. As any of you guys know that have been following my channel for a while, I'm a 365 days a year all season overland car camping backpacking whatever i don't generally let the weather dictate whether i go or not but depending on the weather conditions it does alter my gear setup and the way i do it a little bit so we'll see how the weather holds on this trip and i'll show you guys start showing you guys a little bit of some of the winter camping stuff but the worst of the winter is yet to come this is still pretty mild All right, we are off the main road and breaking fresh track. So we've got a couple inches of snow, not too big of a deal. Hopefully just enough to soften up some of the little bumps here. But the coolest thing is no more tracks on the road. Well, that's not true. There's a set of coyote tracks, but we're beyond any vehicle tracks now. All right, so the roads are getting smaller and we're starting to get into some country now that nobody's been into in a while. And I'm running four-wheel drive, sway bars get disconnected. It just helps even out the ride a little bit. And this is one of the areas where these Jeeps really excel, is the suspension travel in them is just awesome. And on these just rough roads like this, they actually take the terrain really well and provide a pretty decent ride out here. They're terrible on the highway, but out here on roads like this is where they really shine. I got my buddy Matt along with me again for this trip and so it's pretty cool having an extra rig. It just gives me that much more confidence in going a little bit more remote out here and knowing that we got a second rig if one of them goes down. One of the nice things about having a couple inches of snow on the ground like this is it really does smooth out some of the smaller bumps and vibrations and stuff. So. It's pretty nice traveling out here, actually. There's not, not really enough snow to make it a problem. It's a little bit slick in spots, but there's just something about the desert with a nice fresh snow on it. <clears throat> Everything's just so clean and crisp out here, and you can see all the activity from all the animals, all the fresh tracks and everything out here, so it's a pretty cool deal. Something I've always loved to do is just drive the endless miles and miles of two-track roads that meander out across the desert. I've learned over the years that usually if there's a road out there, it goes somewhere. It was there for a reason. Back in the day when most of those roads were built, people didn't just do things like that for entertainment. So that's exactly what Matt and I did. We just spent the day mostly just driving the roads, seeing country, and enjoying ourselves. I don't even know how many miles we drove, but we crossed over a couple of different buttes, passed through a few valleys, drove through old growth juniper forests, along dry lake beds, and eventually the sun started getting low in the sky and it was time for us to start thinking about finding a place to camp for the night. Well, you guys are never going to believe this. I <clears throat> passed up back there. Uh an hour or two ago an awesome spot for us to camp but of course now I'm out in the middle of this country that's just terrible for camping in it's wide open nothing but a little bit of scrub juniper out in it and not any significant amount of wood out here to be found or anything and when it gets dark early like this it's nice to have a good wood supply so you can have a nice fire for a couple hours into the evening Anyway, we'll keep hunting, see if we can find a spot, but things are not looking good out here. All right, so we're coming into some territory that I've been through before. In fact, we're coming up to kind of a cool spot. It's a little place that, well, we've always called it schoolhouse because there used to be 
what we always thought was a schoolhouse here and it collapsed oh probably 10 years ago or something like that but it's a pretty cool site it's by where there's sometimes year-round water sometimes it dries up um, towards the end of the summer but oh yeah we're coming up on it right now in fact we'll we'll get out and show you guys real quick Back in the day, I remember when this was still standing and it finally collapsed, uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago or something, but this is still a pretty cool spot in here. An old wagon road went along this old slough where there's a water source here that in most years where there's a decent amount of rain, there's year-round water here. So there's also a lot of Indian artifacts scattered around the hills around here. And I found old uh, Spencer cartridges up on this butte behind us. So. Anyway, we're burning daylight, so we're going to roll and see if we can find a spot to camp. Well, the temperature's dropping and we're starting to get a little bit of snow. We'll have to keep an eye on this. If a big storm rolls in, <clears throat> that could pose a little bit of trouble for us. We're probably 25 miles away from a road that gets any kind of maintenance this time of year actually maybe even a little farther than that so we've got a couple inches of snow on the ground already and as long as we don't get too much more we'll be fine we can probably get another four inches and still be okay but if it starts pushing much past eight ten inches that could start making some problems for us out in some of this country all right guys we are in luck we're rolling into a really nice little spot to camp so we're going to jump out of the rigs and start to get a camp all lined out here but either this afternoon or in the morning i'll show you guys around this really cool old historic homestead site you guys are going to want to see this all right it's still snowing a little bit we found a nice little spot to camp here so we're just going to drag some gear out of our rigs that we're going to set up in the our little community kitchen fire area so we'll drop it off and then we'll disperse our trucks out and find our spots where we're going to set up our individual campsites so we got a nice little spot back up underneath a couple yeah. of these big junipers we'll set up our chairs and our tables and our little community cooking hanging out by the fire area here put the fire pit right here in front of us and then we'll have a little bit of cover from the snow with these big juniper trees Yeah, I'm thinking as long as we don't get too crazy with the fire, we can put it right here. And then these trees will give us just a little bit of cover from the snow. All right, we're going to run back up the road in Matt's truck. Looks pretty cool with the lift kit on it, the new lift on it, but we're going to run back up there. We saw some wood. There was a fire through there, and we saw some wood that looked like it had been cut up into some length. So we're going to see if we can go grab some firewood. All right, this is perfect. we got a nice load of wood. Yeah. Hopefully plenty to get us through the whole night. Yeah, I think it'll be really nice. I got a nice and level spot here, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my tent real quick. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel, I'm running the Free Spirit Recreation M55 High Country Series rooftop tent. And this version I'm running is the Tri-Layer, which is really well set up for winter camping. But the thing I'm really liking about this tent is just the insulated fabric helps retain the heat and it keeps it just a few degrees warmer on the inside of the tent. And this High Country Series tent is really quick to set up. The first step is I'm going to unbuckle the cover. It's got buckles on all four corners, so I'll just walk around it and completely un unbuckle the cover. Now what I do is I leave the buckles on this backside buttoned up because what I'm actually going to do is roll up the cover and just set it down between the awning and the tent. And by rolling that cover up and putting it in between the awning and the tent, what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to deploy the awning if I want, set up the tent, and it's also going to keep when it's snowing like this, it's also going to keep the snow from piling up inside. So on this model of tent, the ladder is actually the structural support for this overhang side. So basically what I do 
as I just set my ladder height to whatever I need it to be to make the pan of my tent level. All right, so after that last trip where it was like negative three or three degrees out here, I had to replace that old Wiggies bag that I had in the garage. So I got a new zero degree Wiggies bag. So this will be my winter bag. So I'll show you guys a little more detail on my sleep system later tonight when I'm crawling up into bed. But the short of a long story is, is that generally the coldest bag I run is a zero degree bag. And then I have a couple of layers, usually those Woobies or what I like is a zip up Woobies to supplement it. I don't like to run anything rated any colder than zero degrees for a sleeping bag because the temperature ranges can fluctuate so much during the winter and I don't like to be too hot in my sleeping bag. So I run a zero degree bag and then as it gets colder than that, I just supplement with layers. All right, well, got my tent set up. Matt's over there pecking away at camp. So I'm gonna go over there and help him. I'll take my table over there. I already have my food box and my chair and stuff, but I'm pretty buttoned up. My sleeping quarters are good to go for the night. And so next we'll start working on camp and getting a fire started. Yeah, too much of a hole. Oh, we got a nice little camp set up here. Matt setting up, uh, he's got a ready light too. Mm. Have you been using that much? Oh, I love it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So in my mind, one of the critical pieces of gear, especially in the winter time, is lights. Overhead lights for camp. So that for me is the ready light. And then flashlights, handheld flashlights, and then headlamps. But one thing that I wanted to show you guys is I've got this Olight M2R Warrior light. So I've been using this M2R Warrior now for three months or something like that. And the more I use it, the more I like this little light. It's, um, <clears throat> it's got a switch on the side that allows me to turn it on to whatever the last setting that it was on. And then that button on the side also changes the light setting. So it has four brightness levels. 90% of the time I just run it on the lowest setting. But on the tail cap, there's another a momentary switch that you can just put pressure on, or you can click it in for constant on. And that clicks it on to what's called turbo mode. And I don't remember the lumens on it. I think it's like 800 lumens or something crazy like that. But I just really like the configuration. So it's just been a super handy little light. All right, so I got another piece of gear I'm super excited about. <laughs> so this is a Rome pie iron. But what this is, is this cast iron deal that you can put different kind of pastries and breads and stuff them with all kinds of delicious meat and everything. So you guys will have to wait for the next video for me to cook anything in it. Because <laughs> this trip I didn't have a lot of time to prep or shop or anything but what I am going to do tonight is I am going to season these so I watched a couple of YouTubes on how to season them I got some Crisco and it sounds like basically I just need to repeat this cycle a couple of times where I cover them with Crisco heat them for about 10 or 15 minutes and then repeat the process so that's one of my little projects for tonight the only thing I'm bummed about is is I only got one of these sometimes out here in the winter I like to eat a lot of food and I think I might want to make more than one delicious little meat pocket at a time in them. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to season these. And understand that I'm no expert at this. I just watched a couple of YouTube's, uh, YouTube videos on it. But the first step is just to stick them in the fire. And they're coated with a paraffin wax coating to keep them from rusting and storage and transport and everything. So the first thing I got to do is I got to burn slash melt that paraffin coating off of them. All right, so I got all the wax cleaned off of them. Now I'm just going to let them cool down a little bit. And then I'll uh, pull some coals out of the fire, make a little bed of coals there, soak them down with Crisco, and start the cycle. All right, got a nice little bed of coals down there. These things are still a little warm, but not too bad. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and liberally coat them with Crisco. So what I saw on the internet was you want to do front and back. All right, I've got them down over this little bed of coals here. 
and let them sit there for about 15 minutes and then supposed to repeat the process a couple more times. All right, so especially in the winter time, you get pretty creative with your camp food and Matt's come up with a, uh, with a unique new combination. So what do you got going on here, Matt? Oh, I've got Ritz crackers. And then we've, uh, we've got the ever so uh, handy Mexi Pep. The Mexi Pep. And huh? then you know, if, if one didn't like Mef Mexi Pep, I'm Just sure tapatio. somebody likes Tapatio. Yeah, so. nice. Tapatio is great too, so. All right, well, I'm in the bucket. I'm gonna try this, so. <laughs> it's pretty good. Going with a couple of drops of mm. Mexi Pep on a Ritz cracker. Is that what kind of crackers we got? Mm hmm. Mm. That's nice actually. Just adds a little kick mm. to the cracker and I've probably slept hundreds of nights in that bag. Yeah. It's been washed and You got your you got your money's worth out of it. Definitely got my money's worth out of it. I'm not complaining. It's probably a nice summer bag. Yeah. So on the topic of lights, I'm a little bit neurotic about lights. I feel like it's I just can't have enough of them, so I usually always have at least two lights of some kind on me. But another one of the lights that I really like that's kind of a go-to for me are these little Princeton Tech Fred headlamps. And there's a couple of reasons why I like them. One is they're pretty lightweight, so they're easy to stick in a pocket, my chest pack or whatever. But also they have a red light on them and two brightness settings. And then they have white light also when I'm out hiking around at night, which I like to do in the desert, not as much in the wintertime because there's not as much wildlife and stuff to see, but a lot of times I'll use that red light as it doesn't completely mess up my night vision and my eyes. So I like the red light for certain times when you just don't want as much of a light signature too. But super handy, Princeton Tech Fred headlamps. Well, what do you think, Matt? It's getting to be about that time of the night. Yeah, it's not too late, but I don't know. We've been out on the trail for a while, and I think both of us have been up for a while. So, yeah, it was. We started early today. All right, I snugged up here in my rooftop tent. I've got the heater going. Man, it is super toasty in here. I get a lot of questions about running the propane heater inside my tent and isn't that really dangerous or whatever. And so, as you guys can see, I, or maybe you can't see, but I keep my tent really well vented while I'm running the heater in here. And then I only run it like in the evenings while I'm awake or in the morning when I first wake up. My rule is I never fall asleep with the heater on. My philosophy is at nighttime when I'm sleeping, I don't really need the heater. That's what my sleeping gear is for, to keep me warm while I'm sleeping. The only thing about the heater and the thing I really like about it, it is, is it is a real luxury to be able to kind of lounge in the tent for a little bit before I go to sleep when it's nice and warm, <clears throat> but I never run it while I fall asleep. So I've got all my usual little supplies beside me. I have everything buttoned up, everything put away inside my tent, except for a few critical things. I've got a headlamp, a flashlight, my pistol, a knife, my phone, and of course my Grizzly Long Cut Wintergreen. I always keep those things handy where I can reach them at night. Oh, <clears throat> one of the most important things, I keep my latrine handy. All right, well, I'm getting ready to crash out for the night, but I'm in this new Wiggy Zero Degree sleeping bag, and I just wanted to tell you guys I've been super impressed with Wiggy sleeping bags and I'm not sponsored by them. They've never given me a product or anything, but I started using them about 15 years ago and I've never gone back. So that's all for me tonight, guys. I'm hitting the hay. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll have some other adventures. For tonight, Coyote works out. Good morning, guys. It's about 5.45 in the morning and I'm just waking up having my typical dump a package of Starbucks V in a water bottle. That's my first cup of coffee before I get out and get the fire started. But one thing that I I think has been really awesome about this tent is there's almost no condensation in this thing ever. I had a little bit of frost inside it on one like right around zero degree morning, but like last night, it probably got down around 21, 22, somewhere in there. 
and there is zero condensation inside this tent and I think this tri-layer fabric of the 55 High Country series tent is just really breathable so it doesn't build up condensation and you know, that's always a challenge especially with single walled tents which a lot of the rooftop tents are is getting a bunch of condensation inside them but this has been the actually the best one that I've ever been in so far as far as the condensation goes <clears throat> so I'm just gonna finish uh, my morning coffee here and then um, get out there and start the fire yeah it's a little chilly this morning it's about 21 22 degrees right now I think probably getting close to seven o'clock but got a roaring fire going Matt's still sacked out but I'm sure he'll be up soon he'll hear me out here moving around and uh, man it's just a beautiful sunrise coming up all right well I can see Matt's coming up to the fire and we got a rig started when it's this cold out I usually always start my rig in the morning pretty close to when I wake up and just number one make sure it starts and number two let it warm up a little bit we've got some water going in Matt's kettle he's got the Coleman dual burner stove which is actually kind of nice I usually just have my single burner so he's boiling a big pot of water. We're getting ready to have some breakfast. And I'm really excited because I've got a, found a new freeze-dried meal to try. These are these peak refuel meals. And I don't, one of my guys on my channel commented, or actually a couple of different people have said that I should try these. So I found their website and I ordered a case of them. But the meals are really good. And what's super exciting to me is just they have some different flavors I've been eating the mountain house meals so long and they are really good it's just that you eat the same you know they only have so many meals and you eat the same ones over and over so this has been really nice having some a little bit different variety so this morning I'm gonna have their version of the breakfast skillet which I've never had before so we'll see how it compares to the mountain house breakfast skillet which is actually one of my favorite mountain house meals Now, I don't know these meals like I know the mountain houses, so I'm not 100% sure how much water to put in here. So I'll just eyeball it. That looks good, though. All right, here we go. Taste test on the Peak Refuel breakfast skillet. Curious. It's good. It reconstituted really well. The uh, It's not extremely flavorful. It's a little more bland than the mountain house one. But it has a lot more like bigger chunks of potatoes and peppers and stuff in it so it's actually really nice i think uh i think i'll i'll pep it up a little bit with some either some tabasco or some hot sauce to give it a little bit more flavor but as far as just the natural taste of the sausage and the peppers and the eggs and the potato it's really good well we got some breakfast in us and I just wanted to take a little bit of a walk around here. I'm going to show you guys a couple of things. I told you we're camped at the site of this old homestead. So I was kind of hunting around. It's been a while since I've been here. But I wanted to find a couple of the ruins over here. And I can see right over there the first one I was trying to find. So So this was a pretty major homestead and what I'm standing in right now was their cistern or their water storage tank and it's pretty incredible the old mortar that it's made out of and the local rocks. So this homestead was built initially or settled this site was settled initially around 1890 and was occupied all the way up until close to 1920. So this is one of the few things that still remains here 
but it's another example of one of those things that if, even if you were driving by out here on one of these desert roads you'd never see it but it's just testament to the all the people that lived out here back in the day right here behind me I'm about 50 yards away from where that cistern was and right here is the old root cellar the walls are made out of stone inside there there's a stone entrance to it and it's just a really neat old site out there there was an old windmill and a well and the windmills down and the well normally you can see a little bit of so I'm going to walk out there. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to see with all this snow on the ground, though. Right now, with all the snow on the ground, it's really hard to see any of it, but I'm standing right on the site of where the actual homestead building that the people lived in, the dwelling, or at least one of the main dwellings that was here. And when the snow's not on the ground, there's a pretty good outline. You can really clearly see the foundation, all the stacked rocks that they used for the foundation, still outlining the perimeter of the L-shaped homestead that was built out here. But just pretty, pretty neat little country out here. And you drive for miles and miles and miles, and it just seems like you're out in the middle of nowhere. But the thing that's always so amazing to me is just how much of this country was settled back around right around the turn of the early 1900s late 1800s and that was at a period of a bunch of wet years and so there was a lot more grass and a lot more surface water a lot of these dry lake beds that i've driven across out here on this trip actually had water in them during those few years so all these homesteaders came out here and they felt like it was it was country that they could make a living off of with all the water and all the grass that was out here. I think you guys can probably see behind me, there's this timber laying here on the ground and the ends of it were cut with an ax. I don't know if this was, you know, a chunk of an old corral or what it was. But anyway, after that period of wet, damper climate out here, what happened was around 1910, it started drying up. And by 1920, most of these dry land, desert land homesteaders out here could not even scratch enough off of this land to make a living so they starved out dried up spent their life savings and went back to the cities to try to make a living but the bones of that past are scattered all across this country out here and it's really you know it's one of my favorite things to do as you guys know is crisscrossing this country and finding all of these old remains of that history out here it's a piece of history that you know a lot of people think of the homestead era back in the midwest and things but out here in the oregon desert it was alive and well too well i had a nice little walk around here i'm gonna head back to camp and we're gonna start breaking down camp matt's probably already got most of his buttoned up then we'll start exploring we're gonna hit some more country hopefully find another homestead site and maybe even if we can, the site of this old stage stop. All right, had a nice little walk and looks like Matt's got some of his stuff buttoned up here. So I'm gonna walk over and start buttoning up my rooftop tent and that won't take me too long. And then we'll, uh, we'll hit the trail not too long after that. See Matt's got the teapot going by the fire. So maybe we'll have another cup of coffee before we get out of here. Try to get a the bulk of the snow off of here before I fold it up. Yeah. 
All right, we are on the trail and it is turning into a beautiful day out here. So we're gonna run this section of track that <clears throat> I've never been on before. It'll take us through five or six miles of kind of off-road Jeep trail and hopefully tie us back around to a place where I have been through before. So, but along the way, there's a site that I want to check out that I know there was some kind of old historic occupation at, and I think it may have actually been a stage stop. Some of the homesteads that were located in the right, in the right place, they may have also served as like a stage stop or a Pony Express stop, mail route stop, things like that. So hopefully we'll find that, but man, it is just gorgeous out here. One thing about this desert country out here is it looks so bleak and desolate and it looks like there's hardly any life out here but one of the things I love about when you get snow out here is you see all the tracks and you really realize how much life there is out here even in the dead of winter like this even right now driving down the road and seeing coyote tracks I think there's a set of coyote tracks hopefully you guys can see that through the camera right there but I've been seeing deer tracks crisscrossing the road coyote tracks if you get out and walk You'll see tracks from little mice, rabbits, all kinds of things, and you realize there's actually quite a bit of life out here. All right, guys, let's take a look at this. I don't exactly know what this is. Yeah, and then sometimes you stumble across stuff like this and I don't even know what this is it's old this is some really old masonry with some of the native rocks and stuff in it I don't know if this was an old cistern or a foundation to a building but maybe we'll take a little walk around here and see if we see any other sign hard for the camera to pick up but there is actually a stone foundation here and then I'm down in this hole here that definitely was built by the hand of man so there was some kind of a structure right here maybe this was a root cellar maybe it was a foundation of another building so I'm gonna mark this on the GPS and come back here and explore this in the spring So this stretch of road we're running now is an old stage and wagon road <clears throat> and I know somewhere along in this stretch there was a stage stop so we found now we just stopped at our second site and the wind was blowing like crazy so I didn't get much footage but I'm thinking one of those one of those sites that we've seen along here or maybe one that we missed and haven't seen should have been a stage stop stop along the wagon road. All right, we're getting close to a spot I've been wanting to check out for a while. I don't know if there's anything there, but it's kind of this lonely stand of pine trees out in the middle of this wide open flat. And it's right along a ridge line that's named Moonshine Ridge on some old maps. So I don't know if there was some old, you know, whiskey still site out there or what, but um, I think it'll be kind of cool to check out. If nothing else, it looks like it might be a cool spot to camp sometime. This ridge line we're on, where these pine trees are, is on the map is called Moonshine Ridge. And then just out there in the flat, there's a spring called Whiskey Spring. So it makes me think maybe this was a place where the moonshiners went back in Prohibition and Matt and I stumbled across this spot right here. And there's a couple of bed frames and an old cooler and an old stove and could have been the could have been the spot of a old whiskey still who knows so 
we're gonna kick around here and check it out a little bit. So the bottoms, of, yeah, it was. It is an old jerry can. Look, it says U.S. It's an old military jerry can. Yeah, there's a G on the side. USA right there. Yep. MC. MC. Marine Corps. Oh shit. What do we got going on here? I'm gonna have to look at the map. Yeah, pretty straight. Pretty straight. Over to your driver's side. Driver's side. You can go that way too. Hey. Go, yeah, keep cutting, keep cutting. Yeah, straight now. Yep. Slow down. This left side is going to come down just to touch into a little knot. You're good. Um, come this way. Slow, 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 slow. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, keep coming. Come on. You're good, slow, slow. Just roll right off that slow. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, good. Come just like that. Straighten your tires just to, okay, perfect. Nice and slow. Come forward really easy. You're going to drop. Good. As the sun was starting to get low in the sky and the day was coming to an end, we traveled the last 10, 15 miles or so out of the desert. By the time we hit the pavement, we had covered over 90 off-road miles on the trip, had a great camp, a great time around the campfire, and visited a couple of pretty amazing historic sites. Having Matt along is always a good time, and we always work really well together out in the desert. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed sharing this little adventure with us, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Coyote Works, out.